All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, um, Five Keys to XDR Strategy Success. My name is Katrine, and I'm the field marketer here at Vetra AI. Couple of housekeeping before I introduce our speaker today. We appreciate your participation on this topic. So please ask questions at any time using the window button at the bottom of the widget. The speaker will answer your questions at the end of the session. If we do not address your questions during this broadcast, uh, we will respond via email after the event. We have also indicated some useful resources at the resource box. So please feel free to click the link. That's all the announcement we have. Today features um, speaker we have is Chris Fisher, the head of security engineering for Vetra AI in APJ. So without further ado, Chris, over to you. Thanks, Catherine, and thanks everyone for joining today. Really appreciate your time to walk through this. Um, and it's really funny, you know, the title of the, the thing talks about XDR and we'll go into to really what that means to, to us and I think what it means to everyone. XDR is kind of one of those really confusing terms. Um, but to me, it's around threat detection and response. So um, let's walk through why we need to get better threat detection and response. And I think as we go through this, we'll walk through the Gartner hype cycle and what they talked about for the security operations for 2022. Um, we're going to go through just how we can achieve better threat detection and response and just the five key areas that, that we believe are really important um, to be able to do this and, and happy for questions, guys, if you come through that we have through there or you have differing opinions, we'd love to have a chat to you about it. Uh, then we'll just do a quick wrap up and some Q&A at the end of this. Um, so I know we're getting close to the end of the year. I hope everyone has had a wonderful year. Uh, if we don't get to speak to you beforehand, I'm going to say have everyone have a Merry Christmas. Um, but let's get cracking on today. Let's look at what we're seeing and why Gartner really came out with this hype cycle for um, you know, security operations. And I think if we start with a problem statement and look at what Gartner was really trying to identify um, with, with this um, hype cycle that they brought out and the paper that went through it, and I've read through it a few times. I'm, I'm not sure if everyone's seen it or not. It's quite a, a decent and lengthy report and we wanted to pull sections out just to help you digest it and I guess give our view on it as well. But if we look at the, the problem statement that Gartner came up with, it's saying Gartner expects there will be an increasingly diverse set of exposures and risks that organizations need to gain better visibility and control over. Yeah, we get that. Um, obviously, the last few years, we've seen there's been a lot of technology that's been added into the, the ecosystem that we have as an enterprise. Cloud adoption obviously has been huge. Digital transformation has happened in a massive way over the last few years. So understanding that, I think everyone gets that, but the next piece is really security operations, technologies and concepts must enable this greater visibility and control, faster response and works cohesively across multiple vendor solutions to reduce risks for business. And that really says to me that the, the biggest need is around visibility and control. Like we need to get better with our visibility and control holistically across our ecosystem. But if I look at this problem statement and, and really understand and, and dive into what it is or try and condense it down to something, you know, we, we talk to CISOs and we've done a bit of research actually. And one of the statements that came out from most CISOs, and this was 72% of the, the CISOs that we had surveyed, really said that, the biggest challenge is we don't know where we're compromised right now. And if I think, think of that Gartner statement, it's really saying that this boils down to we don't have the visibility to understand if we're compromised right now. What's our exposure? How do we deliver this? And I think this is something that is very telling. And obviously, we're all aware of the news that we've seen over the last couple of months. And I know I've come on a couple of times and said every time you look in the news, there's another massive breach coming on but I've never seen anything like this uh, in terms of the velocity that we're seeing of attacks. And I hate to say it, it's almost the desperation we're starting to see. I know uh, when I talk to, to some of our analysts that we have here at Vectra and I talk to other customers that have either gone through attacks recently and have been successful in stopping them or have been undergoing them for a period of time, the, the, what we're seeing seems to be way more desperate and the attackers seem more desperate. And that to me says it's a worrying thing. You know, when you see desperate people means that um, they can become very unpredictable and potentially do a lot more damage than they're expecting to do. So we go back to this, we don't know where we're compromised right now. 
well, what do we need to solve that problem? And what we really looked at and we boiled it down when we're looking through this, this Gartner hype cycle was really a few areas. And I'm going to explain this as we go through, but the need that we see is better coverage, better clarity, better control. Ultimately, we're trying to reduce complexity, improve competency, and I'll cover this off in a bit of detail. And then ultimately, that's going to lead to increased confidence. So if we break down what is XDR and this extended detection and response, let's understand what we're trying to solve. And I think when I look at most of the security challenges that we see today, and I think as an industry, we've always said, hey, we've moved to a new platform. We need more security tools. Therefore, I need more people to run them. I need more money to buy the tools. Uh, I'm going to have more telemetry coming in. And everything just seems to be more. And the answer to security always seems to be more. And if I think of that, and I think of the challenges that we face right now today, and if I look at what Gartner was talking about in terms of the statement that they've got here, security operation technologies and services defending IT systems from attack by identifying threats and exposure of vulnerabilities, the entries included in the hype cycle aim to help securities with, and risk management leaders strategize and deliver effective response and remediation. The two key words there are response and remediation. So if we're driving more and we're adding more tools, we're adding more signal, we're having a need to add more people, how are we going to effectively respond and remediate when a threat comes through? And I think this adage that, that we've seen, and it's, you know, it's been driven not only from the, the vendors themselves, um, but also just the, you know, that, that understanding of technology, we need to add in more tools in order to be able to cover the, the broader environments, I think is really leading us to a place that we're seeing right now where we go back to that problem statement. I don't know where I'm compromised right now. So let's not look at more. I think the, the piece that we want to look at and I think where we need to get sharper at is around this threat detection and response. Now, when we look at EDR or extended detection, or sorry, XDR and extended detection and response, I think the, the key thing that we really see from this, and I've just pulled from Wikipedia, like the, what, what the actual um, meaning of this was, extended detection and response collects data from previously siloed security tools across an organization's technology stack to remediate, uh, uh, to rapidly and efficiently hunt and eliminate uh, security threats across multiple domains from one unified solution. So if I look at these two statements, XDR is really solving that coverage, clarity, and control through the siloed technologies, taking away those silos to give us the coverage, um, being able to add additional clarity, and then obviously that ability to be able to respond from a unified solution. So if that's what XDR really means, and we boil it down, I think it comes back to the fact we need better threat detection and response. I think because of this more um, problem that we've seen where we're adding more telemetry into say like traditional sim and then we're having to write more use cases in order to be able to solve the challenges or the, the the problem set that we're trying to deliver on to deliver that response capability or the detection capability i think really the crux of that problem is really threat detection and response and if i look at what gartner's talking about they're basically saying that our it infrastructure system has changed so much it's become complex that the more we layer on, the more complexity we're adding rather than stepping back and saying, how can we reduce this complexity, which will ultimately drive the competency of the, the team that we're, we're working with. And that includes you know, being able to attract and retain talent along with increasing the confidence in that responsive capability. So as we shift forward and we look at this notion of coverage, clarity and control, there was Three questions that Gartner has, they, they came through this, and this is really where we look at what's the path to better threat detection and response. And if I look at the three questions that Gartner came up with when they were looking at, you know, how do we solve challenges? One of the questions was, what does my organization look like from an attacker's viewpoint? Well, to me, this is about coverage. An attacker doesn't look at your data center and say, hey, this is a data center, and then I'm, I'm going to do a different attack if I'm going to go to cloud. Um, we're going to treat these two environments separately, and it's not the way they do that. An attacker looks at your business as, I need to get to data, or I need to get to the mission that I'm going to, and whichever path starts me down that journey, 
and whichever path I have to take to get there is the path that I will take. And that to me is really about coverage. Understanding that certain technologies, um, when we move into things like infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, we've had to introduce different solution sets to give us the protective controls that we need. But we haven't necessarily had the detective controls, as in what are the monitoring tools that we're going to be able to get that look past just that straight uh, prevention capability. Then we need to look at clarity. Once we've got the coverage, if we think about clarity, how should it or my organization find and prioritize issues that an attacker will, will see first? And if we think of anything, when it comes to some form of emergency response, prioritization is really key. We've seen it in all walks of our lives. And, you know, it, it comes down to the fact that we have priority that gets put into emails so that if somebody can send you an email on the, the thousand of emails, emails that you've received on a daily basis, you can get a red flag saying this is a priority. It's an easy way for us to focus ourselves and, and look into this. So just the same in security operations centers, if we can prioritize really well, it helps us drive those metrics for response. So that's really about gaining that clarity. How do we get really clear signal out of all the noise and then how do we prioritize that really clear signal so we know what to respond with and then the last question that Gartner came out with was what would happen if an attacker carried out a campaign against my organization's infrastructure and how would it how would its defenses cope and how would the processes perform well this to me is really control so this is why we've come out with these three areas of coverage, clarity, and control is really what's required to drive better threat detection and response. And like all complex problems, we always want to step back and see if there's an easier way to be able to solve this, to break it down into chunks so that we can really drive better outcomes. And this is, this is the view that we've come to is that obviously coverage is key, clarity of that detection signal is very, very key, and then control that ability to be able to respond very, very rapidly as we see these come into our environments, is ultimately what leads us to protecting our organization. So if we agree that better threat detection and response and this coverage, clarity, and control is really the path, let's go and have a look at what's available when we talk about threat detection and response. And if we go back to the Gartner paper and we look at, um, obviously, these expectations and the outcome and, and driving through the hype cycle that we see uh, with the different technologies, and we've, we've picked a few in here. I know it is basically a uh, alphabet soup of name whatever it is plus DR at the end of it at the moment across all the, the vendors that are coming out with new capabilities. And I think having that just in the breadth of what we're seeing and this new detection response capability coming out every other day, I think really does highlight challenge that, that you're facing and, and certainly as an industry that we're facing from the tool sets that we've had that need to evolve. But what Gartner put in here is they, they broke it down and they, they pieced it into a few different areas. Endpoint detection and response, we're all well aware of. I think this has really hit the plateau of productivity. Um, you know, it's a technology that's been around now for a number of years. Most organizations will have EDR embedded into their systems. And most, um, most processes and incident response, very, very used to, to having EDR built into that. So I think we're, we're kind of there already, but Endpoint only really gives you one lens. When we look at the other lenses that we're trying to solve, network detection and response is starting to hit into, like, head into that, that um, plateau of productivity. And Gartner actually lumped cloud detection and response into network detection and response. And I think this is just a, another example of where network is no longer just a traditional data center. When we think of an enterprise network, we are thinking of cloud as being an integral part of that network. We obviously see things like managed detection and response coming on, and we'll, we'll cover off a little bit of detail as to where that, that sits a bit later on. Um, we get uh, identity threat detection and response, which is something that's fairly new. We're seeing this come out, but as attackers are using more and more identity-based attacks on organizations with legitimate user credentials. Um, we're seeing the need for this to be able to, to identify those behaviors very quickly. And then XDR, which is really hitting that kind of the, the peak of inflated expectations and heading through that trough of disillusionment. 
So if I look at the core categories and if I think of as a business, you know, what are we going to invest in? How are we going to develop a strategy that's going to deliver value immediately? Um, if I look at some of the services that we see in here that are five to 10 years out, whilst they're of interest, if they're not going to really generate and protect our business now, is there really a point to be starting to look at those from a strategy perspective? And if we think of the time scale that we've got in here, you can see the different areas and the other technologies that have been dotted along here that will show you sort of where Gartner is expecting these categories um, to really gain that, that productivity. And I'll just break that down into a, a bit of a table for you. It really shows you what we can expect to see in the next five to 10 years and where that incremental value is really going to exist you know, how you can change um, either an organizational posture or if you look at risk scores to be able to drive those risk scores down. Um, as I said, EDR, we know where that sits. It's already really in that, that peak of productivity. Um, but if I look at what sits in this two to five year range, well, there's a few things that are coming out from Gartner's viewpoint. Now, identity threat detection and response, whilst it's a fairly new technology, it is developing very rapidly. And I think the need for this is, has been driven very, very quickly around this. And there's some other services that you'll see in here, security, incident, and event management, the SIM. We're still not seeing that as a path of value. And again, SIM technology has been around for a long, long time. So whilst we look at it saying we're going to get incremental value in the next two to five years, history is showing us that it's just not keeping up with what's going on. You'll see managed detection responses in here. You'll see uh, vulnerability prioritization technology. You'll see network detection response, breach and attack simulations. Uh, digital risk protection services as well has been put into this. Obviously, in the five to 10 year range, you'll see some other things that are going through there. And a lot of these uh, that are being picked up, and the one thing that was very interesting for me to see in here was XDR is actually sitting in this five to 10 year path. So whilst XDR, we hear a lot of hype about it, is it really delivering the value that we expect from it? And what is it that we're actually trying to solve? And this is really where we argue the fact that threat detection and response is the key thing that we're trying to solve in order to be able to protect the organizations that we're with. So if we drive into this and break it down, how do we get to this threat detection response and how do we get that near-term value realization um, so that we can be protecting our businesses more efficiently and, and overcoming some of the challenges that we're seeing with finding staff, retaining staff, um, that signal to noise ratio that we see at the moment. And obviously the development of use cases that we start to see as attackers move into different environments. So bearing in mind the, the I guess the six really key areas, it's five areas and one of them is an outcome more than anything else is we want to get that coverage, the clarity, the control. We want to reduce the complexity we want to increase the competency that ultimately increases confidence. And I see this confidence is more the outcome rather than, than something that you can uh, drive through from, from everything else. And it's kind of a byproduct of, of the five things that we have in there. So if we break it into these five keys and we look at identifying the pain that we see with these, what's the path to getting through each one of them and then the payoff, you know, the, the outcomes that we get out of this. We'll walk through these and, and go through this. So if you do have any questions through here, please please feel free to ask. Um, so if I look at coverage, I think most people understand why we need the need for coverage. Um, when we talk about you know, an increasingly diverse set of exposures and risks that an organization needs to gain better visibility over, I don't think there's anyone on this call that would argue the fact that the enterprise environment hasn't shifted. We're seeing big shifts at the moment. I'm also starting to see you know, that the shift to cloud was something that we've been talking about and moving in a, a very rapid succession, obviously, through the pandemic. But as we mature through that, I'm starting to hear some really interesting viewpoints on potentially coming back from the hyperscalers of the world where there's a lot of cost to private cloud as well. So I think this, this hybrid world and this complex world that we have is here to stay. Obviously, things like work from home, I don't think are going anywhere. So we're not going to have everybody coming back into the corporate environment and then leaving. This, this hybrid view of everything, I believe, is here to stay. So with that in mind, we're looking at you know, potential cost savings that we need to make for the business from an IT organization perspective. I think the constant reality that we're going to have 
is these things are going to continually change. And we're going to continually see this innovation being driven for multiple reasons. So understanding that these environments are going to move through, what is the path to coverage? And this is really where Gartner called out in this path to coverage. There was a few key areas that would give you that near term, um, you know, two to five year incremental value gain. And the two areas when we look at the detection and response category is this identity detection and response and network detection and response plus cloud detection and response. So what's the payoff when we see this? Well, obviously we get a unified attack visibility. We now have coverage across all of these environments so that it doesn't matter where an attack is gonna come into your organization, you can identify them, but you can also see the paths. I've seen on multiple occasions where an attacker has started, say, on-premise, worked their way into Office 365, and because of the way the tool sets don't speak to each other currently, we've seen um, response teams looking at these at two separate incidents when actually they're the same incident. So missing that learning between the two and the communication between the two and believing that there's two separate incidents going on means you miss that context that comes through. And we all know in security, context is really key. So by having coverage of all these environments, using technologies like ITDR, network detection and response, cloud detection and response, allows you to answer that question. What does my organization look like from an attacker's viewpoint? We're able to monitor those attack techniques to protect identity and access control when attacks occurring and enable fast remediation. This is really what it's all about. And that's that unification and visibility across that to deliver the coverage. So once we have the coverage, we now need to work on clarity. And this is really around prioritization. As I mentioned before, if we can prioritize our security operations center, we can talk about very different metrics in very meaningful ways. Mean time to remediation, to me, and I've said this for a long, long time now, is the only metric that I really care about when I look at a security operations center. Everything else builds into mean time to remediation. And mean time to remediation, in my view, and my definition of it is, it means that we've identified the attacker, we've contained the attacker, we've stopped the attacker, and we've repaired from whatever damage they may have occurred. Now, if we can start to hit those metrics, it means we are able to go and talk to our business in a different way to say, hey, when we do see these things, we can drive it down. We can have conversations around these particular metrics. So that clarity, the only way to get that is through the way we drive those detections. It's the way we identify those attackers when they come into these environments. So having the coverage is the first thing, clarity is the next key piece from this. And if we look at where Gartner came out with the, the two to five year value realization, you're starting to see a reoccurring theme. In this particular area, we're seeing identity threat detection and response being added in. We're seeing network detection and response being added in. And there's a whole list of other things that you'll see in here, uh, managed seam, security incident event management, um, yeah, threat intelligence and services uh, of those sorts of things and, and vulnerability prioritization technology. But as you can see, Identity threat detection response, network detection response seem to be consistent the whole way through this. So they're able to deliver that clarity. Now that's through the capabilities that we see in this category around identifying those alerts without increasing noise. So we can decrease the alert volume, increase the fidelity of the signal, reduce the amount of time that an analyst needs to tune a platform, which obviously helps with things like triage, the challenge we see with burnout for analysts, and this is something that's becoming very, very real as we see just the velocity of these attacks increasing. And we see um, just the, you know, the, the sheer scale that's coming through and the amount of noise that our analysts are having to deal with, it, it becomes very challenging and draining on an individual to be constantly working through that. Obviously the, the speed of time to detection, that investigation, and then ultimately response is the payoff that you're gonna get by heading down this path when you really define what clarity looks like. And this is where a lot of our customers gain a lot of value 
um, out of our platforms through this clarity piece. And this really comes down to the quality of the detections that are being put forward. Then as we shift into control and we think about this problem of we don't know where we're compromised right now. And if we think about, um, you know, this struggle to prioritize risk reduction actions, um, we see that gaps are potentially being left or corners are being cut in order to drive productivity from IT teams. This control challenge that we have really talks about how we respond. And again, if we look at these two to five year um, pathways that Gartner has put forward, we've got identity threat detection and response and network detection and response plus cloud detection and response sitting in this same category. And really the payoff of this is a unified and consistent way to control, consistent way to respond. If we think of repeatability from a response perspective, if we've got something that's very predictable that we see that we know that we have confidence in being able to respond or, or repeat that pattern of process through, it starts to drive efficiency. And that's really what this control piece is about. With the coverage that we've seen in step one, the clarity that we've got in, in step two, we now have the ability to drive control that we didn't have previously. Now we are seeing orchestration being put into here. And I'm, when I look at control, you'll see in the next five to 10 years, there's things like SOAR platforms that are being put in there as well. But the challenge we've seen with orchestration is if we don't have the first two right, the orchestration piece becomes really, really hard. And it's that automated response challenge you have, which ultimately leads to the last piece that we talk about from a confidence perspective, which is where you're gonna drive all of this efficiency. So it's critical to me that we have the first two steps right before we can get to this control phase. The control is also incredibly important for us to be able to stop the attacker in their tracks. So the ultimate payoff for this is we now have a consistent way to be able to respond rather than having to do multiple different scripts or, you know, hey, we've got to go to this different team because they've got a way to be able to respond with our AWS environment. I've got to go to the Microsoft team to do the Azure piece we have that consistent way that's agreed upon that delivers that efficiency so we can drive control straight away. Which means that the metrics that I spoke about, mean time to remediation, this is really the bit that kicks that into high gear. And if I look at, you know, what's the, where does that answer come in? Well, what would happen if an attacker carried out a campaign on my organization? Like, how would we defend against that? How would our processes perform? what people, process, and technology are needed to manage and automate and integrate here. And this is really the, the payoff that you're going to get from that is one, you're able to answer that question. Two, you're able to test it on a regular basis. And three, you know exactly where you stand with this. So it's something that, that delivers that measurable outcome from a security tool set that we haven't potentially seen in the past. So with those three key areas done, all of a sudden we can now talk about complexity. Because if I've got the coverage, I've got clarity, and I've got control, and I've got it from not a million different tool sets, but I've got it from a few that that's managed to reduce that, we're reducing our complexity. If I look at anything in the threat detection or response perspective, it shouldn't be increasing workload. It should be decreasing workload. The idea is we want to give you that very, very clear signal we want to help automate those remediation actions. So we shouldn't actually be increasing the workload on, on the team that's there. If we think of efficient and effective use of security budget and resources, this is ultimately where we can start to realize the value of what these platforms can deliver. We want to focus on that near-term benefit as well. So what we did is we took the table of everything we've seen from Gartner and we just highlighted where we look at coverage, clarity and control is really the things that we need to drive better threat detection and response. And we've just shown you graphically in here where it sits. Now, I've already highlighted the two key areas that stand out is identity threat detection and response, network detection and response. And they're the ones that consistently cover all of these areas. So this is really where you're going to be able to reduce that complexity and do it in a unified way. So we can consolidate these, these um, solution sets down, the identity threat detection, network 
detection and response, cloud detection and response, bring that together with your existing investment within an EDR so that you now have one platform that is very quick to deploy and implement that can deliver that threat detection capability very, very rapidly. Do it not necessarily over years of complex uh, deployment, but do it in a way that's very meaningful for your business and not necessarily have to go and reinvent all the processes that you have that sit behind that. So you can gain an effective solution that will really drive an outcome, reducing the complexity and ensuring that when we get to that last phase of confidence, that we really know how we can uh, deliver upon that. Now, when we talk about all of this and everything I've spoken about so far has been about technology. And the reality of everything that we do in IT is always people, process, and technology. And this is really where we start looking at competency and the last key area that, that we cover off. Now, if I think of competency, I, I mean, you can kind of take this in and out of context, whichever way you want to look at it. But I think when I, when I look at competency, I'm not looking at are my security staff capable of doing their job? I'm actually looking at this as, can I find the right staff to help me? Most of the CISOs that I speak to around the region, and you know, I'm very privileged in this job to get out to meet a lot of the CISOs that we have. You know, they never tell me they have a problem going to the management saying, I need more headcount. The problem is always finding the, the, the people to fill the headcount and then retaining staff. We're seeing more and more that staff are moving between organizations and between industries. And the challenge that you have is if you bring a new staff member on, there's a time to train them, there's a time to get them up to speed, and then they leave, they, you, you lose a lot of that uh, institutional knowledge that goes with them. So the challenge that we have in this space is that not only do we have a severe lack of security professionals, we also have the challenge that if we can find them, they're becoming increasingly more expensive. And we also have this, this challenge of maintaining them. Then add to that the diverse environments that we're starting to see. When we look at things like AWS platform as a service, when we look at you know Azure, just Azure security is incredibly difficult, but looking at and understanding how that's gonna operate. Then a good understanding of GCP and being able to see across all these environments with the skill and expertise that we have in our traditional on-premise, that's something that we've built up over years, is very, very difficult to identify. And when Gartner calls out a path for this, it's really where they talk about managed detection and response, threat intelligence products, and managed SIM services. Now, you might ask me what's the difference between managed SIM and managed threat detection or managed detection and response. And the key reality of managed detection and response and the payoff that you get from that is actually the last word. It's all around that response piece. It's still that 24 by 7, 365 reinforcement that you get from the team that will be driving that, that managed detection capability. But the core thing is that ability to respond. If we think of traditional managed SIM or managed shock, a lot of that was just purely around detection. You would get a, a notification from them saying, hey, we've received a particular alert. It's a priority one incident. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. One of your team needs to log, log on and go and do this. Again, that's very challenging. It's not necessarily something that we want, especially if it's a Saturday night at 2 a.m. or Sunday morning at 2 a.m. that you get that message coming through. And this is what managed detection and response is really key about. It's about taking expertise in that solution set to understand and identify what is occurring within the solution set and then drive that response on your behalf so that we can slow down these attackers. We can contain them very, very quickly to make sure that your mean time to remediation metrics are being hit and that you're protecting your business. Now, when we bring all of this together, this is really what leads to confidence the confidence that you can have those automated solutions taking response on behalf of your, you know, behalf of you or behalf of your team. It helps answer that question. We don't know where we're compromised right now. 
we that question can be answered because part of that MDR uh, capability and services will help you when you look at those red team incidences and be able to drive that level of maturity so that you're always aware of what you're looking at. If we think of you know effective and measurable positive impact on risk and profile of the business as a pain point when we think about this confidence is what's going to be able to drive that because we have all of this capability sitting behind us. We have the processes that are running through it. We now have access to the capability or the talent to be able to execute upon that means that we can be more confident in not only the, the measurements that we're taking and the way that we're able to articulate the benefit of the security tool set or the value of what security delivers to the business, but we can do it in a way where we can adapt, modify and change as we see the changing threat landscape to ensure that we're, we're not just looking at today, but we're also future proofing over the next two to five years. And if we think of the pathway to doing this, well, if Gartner is talking about the next two to five years, and I think about it more from what are we doing now and where does our strategy start? Well, EDR is going to be part of that. Then you've got managed detection response, network detection response, plus cloud detection response, identity detection and response to be able to drive this. So by bringing all of these together, you now have the coverage that you need. You're going to gain that clarity because of the way that these technologies go about delivering that telemetry to you. And now you've got control. So that payoff is really the confidence of understanding my entire attack surface, the confidence that the security team have accurate threat signal and a focusing on what matters the most through that prioritization. And the confidence that when something does occur, and you'll notice I use the word when, not if, when something does occur, you now have the confidence to seize control back from the attacker and get ahead of them before there's a problem. If you can stop an attacker in the first two to five hours of their activity, the damage to your business is very, very limited. Chances are it's probably only one account or one machine. If that attacker is allowed to stay active in your business for multiple days, the cost, the complexity, and the challenge of removing them from a remediate, sorry, mean time to remediation becomes inc increasingly more expensive. It's actually exponential in the way that this expense starts to increase. So if you've got that confidence and you can test those metrics, you know that you can now deliver effective security to your business at a way that is cost effective and is very efficient. And this is really where we look at what extended detection and response or EDR is really all about. It's about better Sorry, XDR, not EDR. I need to be you know, cognizant of that. It's very much XTR. But it is really what threat detection is all about and better threat detection. So we bring that into you know, what we're looking at. What are the, the really the, the five keys to getting that extended detection and response strategy or just better threat detection and response? Increased coverage, increased clarity, increased control, so by understanding your attack surfaces, really focusing in on those attacker behaviors, using frameworks like the MITRE attack framework to identify the behaviors that you have coverage in, and using the defend framework to understand how your defensive capability sits against those behaviors to drive that clarity and prioritization. And then the ability to control, assuring that across all of those attack surfaces, you have methods and ways to be able to respond and eliminate that attacker before they can gain a good foothold. By bringing this together helps reduce the complexity of your attack surface. It shouldn't be increasing it. It should not get more complex by having to add more tool sets in order to deliver better threat detection and response. Also by increasing that competency through the augmentation of manage detection and response services to help drive that 24 by seven and really drive that containment for you, ultimately leads to improved confidence. Which means that if I look at the way we need to drive better threat detection and response, it's not something that should require constant care and feeding. It's something that 
should be able to run and automate and deliver outcomes for you that you simply test against on a regular basis. Know that those outcomes are still valid for your business. So with that, I'm going to open up to any questions. But one thing um, before I jump into the questions and answer a few of them, um, some of you may or may not be aware that Vectra actually has a YouTube channel that we post a lot of these things into here. And we've got a lot of uh, different meetings that we have with CISOs. Uh, there's lots of cool little bits that we add in around how the technology works, great how-to guides, uh, and a lot of the use cases that we're solving. So if you jump into the YouTube and just quickly type in Vectra AI, you'll see the channel that's in there. Have a look at it. Subscribe if you want to uh, get some of the latest videos that are coming out. Um, but this is a really, really helpful resource. We want to provide as much information about what we do and how we're helping our customers um, to the public as much as possible. So, so jump in and have a look at that. Um, but if you have any questions, just jump into the Q&A window and we'll um, go about answering those for you. So we'll open up to any questions for anyone who's on the call. Hey, Chris, um, there's this question um, that's coming in. So um, when we look at the threat detect and response, we see all vendors saying that they have 100% coverage of the mitra attack frame and cover attack behavior. So how do yeah. we actually distinguish, like, you know, what is EDR, MDR, IDR uh, will actually do for the business in this instance? Yeah, and it's it's a really common thing that we see. You know, a lot of people will, will take a, uh, let's say, you know, the latest thing comes out from the EDR providers saying I've got 100% coverage of the MITRE ATT&CK framework, so therefore I'm covered. And whilst that's true, they're covered from a particular lens. And this is really where if we look at threat detection and response and we look at the coverage piece that we're talking about, it actually lends really well when you move into something like the MITRE DEFEND framework. And DEFEND, for anyone who hasn't had a look at it, I highly recommend looking at the MITRE DEFEND framework because it really helps stitch together what we talk about in coverage. So it's not just coverage of attack behavior, but it's coverage of environments. Um, and if we think of you know, endpoint solutions, well, they might give you really good coverage of the endpoint, but they're giving you no visibility on the network. They're not giving you visibility of some of those cloud native solutions and you know, platform as a service, et cetera. And this is where Defend helps paint that picture of where you need to have the 100% coverage of all those attack behaviors. So understanding the behavior is very much kind of part one, but the coverage piece is really the key part. And it's what we spoke about as the initial, you know, the initial part of this was coverage is gonna be the key to everything. That's, that's really where it comes in, but you wanna deliver coverage in a way that's not gonna deliver a thousand tool sets to be able to get there. And that's where you, you look past just coverage for the entire strategy to see where you can get those consolidated efficiencies. So, Whilst having the 100% coverage of the MITRE ATT&CK framework is, is important, um, understanding the coverage across your ecosystem is equally important. All right, thank you. So the other question well, we have on the chat line is, uh, MDR is something that we hear all the time. Is this not just an MSSP providing us either SOC or SIM services? So how is uh, MDR actually different? <laughs> yeah, and again, another good question. Um, you know, I, I've actually had this one a couple of times where I've been in meetings with people that say, hey, you know, you guys have an MDR. Are you just another MSSP or another managed SOC? Um, and I think one of the, the key areas that we look at is the managed SOC providers, whilst they've done a good job to date, it goes back to really around that response capability. Um, now, also the managed SOC providers will typically rely on a SIM technology. They'll pull all the information they can to bring it in and they'll have a bunch of use cases that they've configured and developed. But again, the challenge they have is they've got a lot of noise too. And, and when we talk about the clarity piece, it's something that everyone's struggling with. I know we don't have it necessarily in here and I'm happy to talk to you afterwards, um, you know, on, on different strategies, but the clarity piece is where it's really key. And without that clarity part, the control piece doesn't happen. And that's really where we look at managed detection and response. You will have a focused area in very, it's a very um, targeted area that, that those MDR teams are looking at. So it might be, you know, you've got experts that are looking at endpoint telemetry. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you, I'm very good on the network, but I'm terrible on the endpoint. And this is pretty common across a lot of analysts. They will have flavors of areas where they're very, very strong. So if you've got top talent looking 
in a field of specialization that they're very, very, very good at, the results that you get are far better. And that's where you're able to leverage the managed detection and response providers to not only gain the clarity and that expertise in certain areas that might pick up on something that, that the average person wouldn't, but you also then have the response capability that, that's being able to be driven from there because you have that clarity. All of a sudden the control becomes a lot easier and the confidence levels go up with that. So this is really where we look at managed detection and response is that ability to give you the clarity as well as drive that response for you, which is very different to the traditional MSSP models. Right, so um, there's another question coming in. So if we already have MDR from our existing EDR vendor, right? So do I still yep. need the MDR from Vetra? Yeah, and this is really, you know, it, it's a good question. Um, and it's going to come down to a couple of things. But ultimately, I look at that skill set. The skill set of the MDR provider, if they're looking at from an EDR side of things, the skill set is typically going to be biased towards the endpoint skill set. If you look at someone like Vectra, our skill set is going to be biased towards the network telemetry. We can still do and understand what goes on on an endpoint, and people understand that. But there's just that level of expertise that takes it a step further. It's kind of, uh, if you think about you know anything that that happens in different worlds, but if you look at you know your generalist mechanic that's working on a particular vehicle versus let's say you've got um, some very specialized vehicle and you take it to a mechanic that has a lot of experience with that they're going to find a problem with that car far faster and they're going to fix it faster and when you think about the metrics that you care about as an organization speed is important mean time to remediation is important because that's what ultimately drives down the cost when we're talking about a breach and i think if I look at that specialization, it's really where you might have multiple MDR providers giving you that service because ultimately that's what's going to lead to that really strong outcome. Okay, so uh, we will take the last question for today. So how do the native security tools uh, set from the cloud providers fit into the MDR, the TDR? Yeah, good question. Um, and the native tool sets can be challenging. I think the biggest thing that we look at, we go back to the coverage question or the coverage problem statement. The native tool sets might work very well in that certain area, but most businesses today don't say, let's just 100% rely on AWS. There might be an element of this on-premise and this hybrid world that I spoke about earlier. And you might have, um, whether it might even be mandated, that you can't have everything sitting in one of those cloud providers in case there's a problem. You need to have it across multiple areas. So if we're now stretched across multiple clouds and I have a native tool set that gives me one set of capabilities and maybe one type of response and another tool set that has a different set of native capabilities and might not have any response, how do I build consistency as a security operations center? Now, Consistency, predictability are what drive efficiency. So how do I build that if the native tool sets are everything that I'm relying on? So whilst they can be really good, they can also drive the complexity up rather than reduce it. And if we look at everything we spoke about in that threat detection and response piece from Gartner, it's all around how do we reduce that complexity? So this is really where I see the native tool sets may give some level of visibility and telemetry. They may make it easier to integrate but ultimately you need something that can cover across multiple areas with predictable response capability so that you can build your confidence in how you drive that. All right. Thanks, Chris. Um, I think that is all the questions we will take during the broadcast. So thank you again for everyone for submitting the question. Um, if we do not address your question during the broadcast, we'll answer it via email after the event. So I think that's all for today. A big thank you for everyone who attended this event. So please help us to take the survey before you exit so, can, so that we can improve our content for you for the next sessions. So once again, thank you and hope that you have a wonderful day ahead. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.